Welcome. Let's use the property of logs to expand the following expression. Let's take a look at example A. When we are expanding the log, we have to ask ourselves one question. What is going on inside the log function? There are three things going on inside the log function. We are dividing, we are multiplying, and we also have an exponent. Whenever we have multiple combinations, it is better to always start with the division. We have a property that says anytime that we are dividing inside the logarithm, we can expand it as the numerator minus the denominator. And we're going to do that. So now we're going to get the log of the numerator, which is 5x raised to the 7, minus the log of the denominator. And now notice inside our second log, there is nothing going on. So we are done with that section. But when we take a look at the log of the first expression, we still have a multiplication and we still have an exponent. So after division, then let's apply the rule of multiplication. And the rule of multiplication says that anytime we are multiplying inside the log, we can expand the expression as an addition. So what are the two expressions that are multiplying? The 5 and the x raised to the 7. So let's expand it as an addition, where my first inside is going to have a 5, and my second inside is going to have x to the 7. And now this expression that we are subtracting, let's just bring that down. So we are almost done. The inside of our first log, it is already by itself. So there's nothing to be done there. The inside of our third log, the same case, but the inside of the second log, it still has an exponent. And we have a rule for that. Anytime that we have an exponent inside the log, what we can do, we can get this exponent and bring it to the front. So let's do that. Let's get this value of 7. And now let's bring it in front of the log. So the first term, let's just bring that down. The second term, now it's going to have that 7. But when we bring it to the front, it is a multiplication. And now let's bring down the third term. So we are done. The initial expression that we were given, when it is expanded, we have the following. Now let's take a look at our second example. Now if we want to expand, let's ask ourselves, what is going on inside the log. Now there is no division this time. We just have three multiplications. We got 12 and it gets multiplied by x to the third and then it gets multiplied by the square root of y. Before we move any further, we have to rewrite the square root of y. Anytime that we encounter any kind of square roots within the inside of the log, it's preferable to write it as an exponent. And the square root of y can be represented as y raised to the one half. So let's write that down. Now let's take care of the multiplication. Here we have three expressions that are being multiplied. And there's a rule that says that anytime you have any expressions that are multiplied inside the log, we can expand them as an addition. So now we're going to get log base 4 of the first expression plus log base 4 of the second expression plus log of base 4 of the third expression. Notice that each of the expressions that we're multiplying now are written in its own individual log expression. In our first log, the inside is already a value, so there's nothing to do there. But when we take a look at the second expression, we still have an exponential. And the same goes with the third expression. We still have an exponential. Well, we have a rule for that. Anytime that we have an exponential inside the log, we can get the exponent and bring it to the front. So let's bring down the first expression. And now let's bring the value of 3 to the front. We're going to get 3 times the log of base 4 of x. And let's do the same with the third expression, this 1 half. Let's bring it to the front as multiplication. So we are done. 
what we are saying is that this initial expression that we were given, it can be written as the following expression. There is one thing that I want to point out. Notice that in the second example, our base was of a value of 4. So within the process that we were expanding, we have to write down the base of 4 every time we write the function of log. And that is still here in our final expression. Now let's take a look at our third example. Now this third example, it's a little bit more challenging, but let's take it one step at a time. The first thing that I notice is that the square root, it's affecting the whole expression inside the log. So let's rewrite that square root as an exponent. Now that we can see that the whole inside of our log, it is raised to some exponent, we have a rule that says that we can get that exponent and we can bring it to the front. So let's do that. Let's get this exponent of one half and let's bring it all the way up to the front. Now let's look at what is left inside the log. There is a division and also there are two multiplications. We have a rule for each of those two. Let's apply the rule of division first. And the rule says that anytime we are dividing inside the log, we can have the log of the numerator minus the log of the denominator. So let's do that. Now this one half was multiplied. So I'm gonna keep that outside as a multiplication as well. It is going to multiply the whole expansion at the end. And now within our first log, we have a multiplication. We have a rule for that. We can expand it as an addition. And the same goes with the second log. In our first expression, we are multiplied five times x to the seven. Let's expand that as an addition. And within our second log, we are also multiplying. So we're going to expand that as well. But there is still a subtraction between those two. So we have to be mindful of that. We are going to subtract the expansion of a summation. So we're almost done. Now, the last thing that we should take care of are the different exponents that we still have in our second expression, our third expression, and our fourth expression. Because the rule says that anytime we have an exponent, we can always just bring it to the front as multiplication. So let's do that. Our first expression, let's just rewrite it. Our second expression, let's bring the exponent to the front. This minus, let's distribute. And this exponent of 5. Let's bring it to the front. This minus, let's distribute it, and let's bring the exponent of 3 to the front. So we are done. But I want for you to see that I still made a mistake. When I take a look at the different bases in our logs, sometimes I wrote a base of 8, and sometimes I did not wrote anything at all. We have to be consistent. We always have to write down the base of the log that we started, which is 8. Now we are done. Now we have fully expanded the given logarithm expression. Hello. If you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.